Hi, I wanted to create a short video on how to get started with AI in your research. Now we will be avoiding, we will be avoiding chat GPT, perplexity, and the generative AI formats that you commonly see on the web. We'll be looking at two research specific solutions, one being mostly free and the other being entirely free. So let's go ahead and get started. First, Let's pop into Google Scholar. So if you're a Google Scholar and you want to do a search, it is a fantastic resource. It gives you great results. It, it's super. Why would we want to use anything else? Well, a couple of reasons. One of the things is, let's say you've got a question and you want to pop your research question in, and this is uh, what are some quantum cryptographic algorithms. And so I'll just do a search for that. And it's going to try to find papers that relate to that online. And so I can actually insert, um, this is not a research question right here, but you can ask a research question or you can ask a question and it will actually go through and answer it for you. And I can say, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like this, whatever. And I can click on a whole bunch of these and just say like, yeah, those are all great. And um, I can go through and select those papers. Now, one of the things with Elicit, now that's a E L I C I T, elicit.com, is um, I can go through and export this if I upgrade. So I cannot export my papers if I don't upgrade, but I can export if I upgrade. So you can still you can copy all the information here. You can look at the DOIs. Uh, you can say only show me um, in filters. You can say only show me if it has a PDF, only show if it's a particular year. So let's click on that. It has PDF. Uh, let's just say recent and yeah that's fine and so you can select that and you choose apply and it'll do a search and it'll only show you according to those those actual search criteria so I'll just say yeah I like all those right so you like all those papers then fantastic whatever you want to do with it we can go through and look at uh, next steps with this so we can extract data we can look at summarizing the abstracts now chatting with the papers the um, is a upgraded feature, but what you can do with chatting the papers, I think you can do what four? Yeah, you can do four papers. You can do some papers, and that is you can just ask questions, and it will respond from the document itself, which is absolutely outstanding. So chatting with the papers is wonderful. Um, ask a new question, find papers, extract data, and get a list of concepts, etc. So we can go through and say like, oh, okay, well I want a list of concepts based on this, or I want to add a new column over here that gives me a quick summary of the methodology used, etc. And it's going to try to break down the methodology used with each one of these papers. And it will say, you know, what the methodology is, and you can look at that. And this is a, just a great time saver when you're looking at papers. So Elicit is mostly free. You do have need to upgrade for a number of the features there, for instance, exporting, uh, going through and chatting with more than four papers, etc. But it's a mostly free solution. Now, Research Rabbit is a free solution, entirely free solution. And what this does for you is, well, you got categories and, and collections. So I got my category here, uncategorized. And I'll go ahead and create a collection. And we'll just call this quantum. So I just call it quantum right there. So click on quantum and I'm going to choose add papers and I can do keywords or whatever I want. I'm just going to say quantum cryptographic algorithms. So I'm going to keywords here. Now you can upload a BibTeX file. If you upload a BibTeX file, it'll take your own, uh, your whatever you've done in your research, your own citations. You can upload those and it will use that uh, inside your inside your search. So over here, analysis of problems prospect. Okay, let's look at that. Sure, that's not exactly, that's post-quantum cryptographic algorithms. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, we'll say, yeah, sure, grab this one. Uh, and we'll say, yeah, grab this one too. So I've grabbed a couple of papers here. Okay, that one's actually pretty cool. So we'll grab that one as well. So we'll look at a couple of these. And now to get out of this, I can click the red X right here, or I can click off of the paper. And so, ta-da, they're done, right? We're out. And now what I've done is I've got a whole bunch of authors here on quantum cryptography. I can click on similar works and it will break down similar works for me and show me what those works look like. So I can sit there and I can, uh, I can look at all the papers and how they all relate or I can go through and look at these authors and it'll show me 
which authors are corresponding together. And that's if I want to get authors that I believe may have a similar viewpoint, I can go in and make sure that I stay in that, what, whatever the little click is that I want to stay within. Or I can say, you know what, I want to see authors that are outside of this. And I can go through a different click and I can look at the, the, the little social groups that are just, you know, it's got link analysis over here. So you can look at the, the links and strong links and weak links, but you can see whatever click that you want to get into there. Um, so it's a very, it's an outstanding resource for getting started in your research and really, well, actually really digging into your research as you move later in the research and you say, well, I want to want to go through this and, and dig into it some more. Now, there are a lot of features here we haven't talked about. Uh, one is suggested authors. They can say like, you know, why don't you check out these authors and, and look at what they're saying about things. Now, some of these have already selected, um, but it could, you know, it could select some other, other authors in there. Uh, it can say linked content you know, over here. We got Wikipedia and I can do an export here. So I can export into BibTeX and it'll give me the BibTeX file with the abstracts in the BibTeX file. So I can follow up on that. I can do email updates. I can, of course, update. I can uh, export in RIS or CSV if I want to, but BibTeX is probably where you want to go. Uh, and in any case, what you can do is keep your research papers in one place. Go ahead and make notes on them. So you can make notes con uh, on this kind of things like, you know, like uh, what great paper. That's not a very helpful note. <laughs> and I haven't read the paper either. So there you go. Uh, but you've got some notes that you can put in the papers or whatever else you want to do. And you can dig into uh, the, the PDFs if they have PDFs. And you can look for uh, PDFs, of course, if you want to look for PDFs, you can kind of play with your searches there to uh, be sure that you can find some papers that maybe have PDFs or you can use some other resources for that. I hope that this has been helpful. Sorry I went over a little bit, but um, hopefully it's been worth it. And I look forward to talking to you in the future.